Hey guys, I am back making motorcycle maintenance videos and after my long trip across the country and back, I need a new chain. So I'm gonna put a chain on and I wanna give you five tips on how to use the chain breaker and rivet tool. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay guys, so many of you who follow my channel know that I have gone across the country on a diagonal from Los Angeles to Portland, Maine to grab some good seafood and <laughs> come back. If you haven't seen that video series, you can start the first video here and it'll pop up in the corner. Palms, Pines, and Fishing Lines was a 24-day, 8,500 mile trip across the United States. I take you along for the entire trip. Um, epic, fun, wore out my chain. That chain that I had on my V-Strom had 16,000 miles on it before I left. Then I put 8,500 miles on. So I got 24,500 miles out of a chain. Pretty good, especially heavily loaded the way it was. Um, but there are some tips that, you know, and I already have a video on how to do the chain, so I'll pop up a link to how to change your chain here. But it dawned on me that there's some extra little tips that I'm doing along the way that make this job easier, and I wanted to share those here. So, without further ado, let's get started with five tips for changing your chain and using the chain breaker and rivet tool. As I was riding uh, recently here, once I returned from my trip, I felt a strange little oh, hesitation or a, a little bit of a give as I came off the line sometimes, and I knew that something was up with my chain. And as you can see, there are there's one link there with two rollers that have completely come off. As that link goes around the front sprocket, I could feel it. And so I knew something was up and uh, came home, found this, and I haven't ridden the bike since. I ordered up a new chain. Now it's worth noting here that I also intend to change the front and rear sprockets because they too have a lot of miles on them. Uh, the front sprocket was already through a previous chain uh, that I got over 20,000 miles on. So that front sprocket's looking at 40,000 miles of life and while it isn't necessary to change the sprockets when you're changing a chain, my first tip involves how to loosen the sprocket nut on the front sprocket. Now if you have a paddock stand like this, you might be inclined to put the rear of the bike up on the stand before getting started with this job. But that's my first tip is don't lift it up right away because when you lift it up, you bring the wheel off the ground and it free spins. But up here in the front, underneath this cover, is our front sprocket, and we want to get that loose, and it, we also need that to be free spinning. And you say, well, why would you want the engine free spinning? Why don't you just put the transmission into a gear that'll lock that counter shaft from from spinning and you can apply torque to that nut and loosen it up. Well, you don't want to do that. Yes, you don't want the shaft rotating as you loosen the nut, but you don't want to use the transmission of the bike as the force holding it from rotating. So under that cover is the front sprocket and you've got a large nut that is torqued on very tightly uh, that we have to get loose to change that front sprocket. Now again, this is only if you're changing sprockets. If you're just swapping a chain, well then that sprocket doesn't have to come off. Uh, and then I just want to note, in my case, I also have this little doodad on here, which is a uh, 
it's part of the sensor for my speedometer so that's got to come off which also has some torque on it and uh, a bit of medium strength Loctite and and that so I've got two bolts in my case one in many other bikes cases where I need to torque this thing off and if it's free spinning I'll never get it so tip number one is keep the bike on the ground so that the wheel can be the force that there we go and you can break that loose I had to keep the bike from sliding forward in my case I just grabbed on to uh, grab onto the uh, crash bars there. Sorry, change of clothes here. Um, so tip number one is to keep the rear wheel down and use that to stop the shaft from rotating. When I did what you just saw, the bike was in neutral, clearly, uh, as it was rotating. Now, here's another thing that's kind of a sub-tip. If you have one of these or one of these, impact wrenches. Um, I, I'm not really a big fan of recommending these because they put really sharp amounts of torque into whatever it is you're trying to loosen up and until that nut gives way um, it is hitting that, sh it's, it's moving the shaft and that shaft of course has gears that are, even when the bike's in neutral, engaged with other gears within the transmission um, not necessarily the best way to go. That being said, I have done it with success. Do not use either of these with the bike in gear. That's an absolute no-no. So the other thing I will say, uh, and this is leading into tip two, about these tools is with these pins, you're supposed to be able to essentially push a pin on a link through and you know undo it. Um, let me show another section here. Like you're supposed to be able to take any one of these pins and just smash the thing through and, and knock it out of a link and disconnect the chain in that way. I have found and uh, is that you know this is hardened steel like really really hard. Yes, you can smash through these, but I've literally bent one of these trying to do that. So here comes tip number two. And now that we have the uh, rear or front sprocket loose, we can lift the bike up. So the first thing I want to do is find the master link, which is right here, and just position it toward the back about, oh, Maybe right here so I got some room. And then using my angle grinder, which I own one of these, uh, they're actually really cheap, like you can get them under $20, frankly. Uh, it's not a high quality piece of equipment, but it works. And I'm just going to grind off the heads on these rivets of that master link. flush with this one. There. Now when I put my chain breaker tool on here, it's so much easier for the pin to push that rivet through. Gotta grab my tools. Feel it just give right there. The amount of force that I have to put into this is just a lot less because I shaved off those rivets first. And so then as I take it out, see that the pin is sticking out the other side. So there's the pin sticking out the other side. Now I'll do that for the other.
There. Now I can just pull that chain apart when I get both hands on it. There we go. One chain off. So that's my tip number two is just shave off the ends of these rivets and you don't have to stress your tool as much. Again, the tool is designed to kind of crush through these and make it happen without this step. Um, but it is a lot of pressure on a very hard uh, pin or rivet and again, I, I bent one of these things once so this makes it a lot easier. Okay, so my next tip involves flaring these rivets. First thing I need to know is what is the diameter of a rivet unflared? That is 5.3 millimeters 5.31 we're gonna call it 5.3 with my tool I put the handle on now I have uh, I keep dropping it I've taken this anvil which is the right size for these rivets on here place that anvil in the back and then I've replaced the pin inside with the rivet flare tool and I'm not flaring right now, I'm just pressing this plate onto the link. A little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom, so that it goes on straight and not at an angle. Now I can line up to flare this top one. So 5.3 to start, and I start putting the pin in to the flare. What I'm trying to do is go about 0.4 increase in diameter with my flare. So if I was at 5.3 I want to be at least 5.7. So let's see what I've accomplished here. five point six two just a little more okay Get the tool zeroed yeah, five point six five five point six six let me give it another squeeze Five point seven one should be good. So here's one of the uh, other tips. Oops, the anvil fell up, but I don't need it for this description. When that main flaring tool comes up, it flares out the rivet, and the diameter of this hole sometimes becomes the limiting factor on your flare. So just bring the flaring tool up to where it's just poking out slightly and then crank this on with this and you can flare that rivet even more. So that's tip number four. That's starting to look like a pretty good flare to me. That's definitely 5.7. Okay, same thing on the other one. Five point seven three, so that's a good flare. It really doesn't need to look like more than that. So that's it you guys, that's my tips on how to use a chain breaker tool. My final tip on this tool is where to get one. Um, honestly, you can get these a lot of places, but if you want a 10% off discount, you can get these from Alpha Moto. Uh, they've been great to me. 
and there is a link in the description below or you can find a link on my website urbanmonktv.com also check out my book creating mr corton memoir of building my cafe racer from a 1978 suzuki gs 550 uh, if you're into old suzukis or just cafe racers in general or just custom builds there's a lot to learn about motorcycle mechanics in this book uh, as well as my personal story in falling in love with motorcycling and uh, you can watch that entire build here on YouTube uh, on my channel Urban Monk TV. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to become an Urban Monk. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.